Hello everyone, welcome back. It is so good to see you all. I hope you've had a great week. I sure have. I had so much fun creating today's content for y'all. I can hardly wait to share everything with you. I've come up with some great ideas that I think you are really going to enjoy. Some of these would make some great Mother's Day gifts or you could even just make one for yourself because, well, I did. <laughs> I made one and ended up loving it so much that I'm like, oh, this is going to stay with me. It's really cute. I cannot wait to share these projects with y'all. So let's head on into the studio and get busy creating. Before we get started on our first project, I do just want to take a quick minute to thank all of the new friends that I have met this week for subscribing to my channel. I am so happy to have you as part of my little YouTube family and I'm excited that you are here. Okay, let's go create. For our first project, we are going to need a project board, some florals of choice, and some vinyl lettering, and some cute little paintbrush cutouts. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my cutouts, my paintbrush cutouts on my scroll saw, but if you don't have access to a scroll saw, you could buy yourself some really inexpensive chip brushes that have like the raw wood handles on them, and then just cut the bristles off because those would be so darling for this project probably even cuter than the wood cutouts, but because I have a scroll saw and some scrap wood on hand, I just decided to go ahead and do it this way. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and tape the top parts of these off so I can get a nice straight line. And we're going to paint all of these with some um, gray, like silvery gray, metallic-y, um, paint to kind of get that metal look on the top part of these paintbrushes. And I should actually know what that metal part on the paintbrush is called, but it's escaping me right now. And chances are I'm gonna think of it about halfway through this project. <laughs> but we'll just go ahead and get all three of these painted and then move on to our next step. The next step in our project is going to be some reverse stenciling. And I went ahead and painted our project board off camera because I know y'all just get so sick of watching me paint. We paint so many things in all of our DIY projects. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out all of our lettering to make sure it fits. It's a pretty tight fit. I did cut these letters out on my silhouette cutter. If y'all don't have, um, a cutting machine at home, you can just buy any kind of sticker letters that will work perfect for this project. After all of my letters are adhered down to the board, I used black vinyl so you can't really see these on camera, I apologize for that. But I get them all adhered to our project board and then go over them with one more coat of black paint. This is going to help prevent bleeding when we go ahead, to go ahead and put our primary color on. And while that is drying, let's go ahead and finish up our paint brushes. I'm going to go ahead and just paint these a variety of different colors. I paint all three of them a different color and this is your project to customize, so you just do you and paint them any color that you so choose. I think I chose like a green and then I do like a kind of an earthy, creamy color and then on one of them I am going to just use um, some antiquing glaze uh, just to kind of get that natural wood stained look to my paint brushes. After we get all the handles on our paint brushes um, completely painted, we're going to go ahead and sort of dirty these up if you will i you know we we want our paintbrushes to look kind of used and and well loved so i go ahead and just splotch on some just dabs of paint with my paintbrush and then i go over it with a damp towel and kind of just smear it and smudge it because then it gives it more of that you know faded look and like worn over time worn look after i do this oh and i do do this with a couple different colors i splatter smear on that um, creamy color and then I do a little bit of green and I even do a little bit of magenta here just to add a little full layer to our paint brushes and after I do all of our smudging we're going to go ahead and do some splattering because what paintbrush doesn't have splattered paint all over it right <laughs> Thank you. 
after we get all of our aging done to our paintbrushes, we're going to add a little bit more rustic flair to these by just giving them a little bit of sanding. I go around all the edges and sand those a bit because you know when you hold a paintbrush, the paint actually starts to wear off. I have so many paintbrushes that look just like this actually. And then to just kind of, um, blend in all of our paint splatters a little bit. I do go over them very lightly with um, just a light sanding. Y'all know me, we have to add a little extra embellishment because I just love embellishing things. So I decided it would be a lot of fun to add a little bit of jute to um, the base of our brushes where that metal kind of meets the wood handle. So I just take some jute and I kind of just start wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. And I did struggle a little bit here because of the rounded shape of these. It was a little struggle, but I did finally get it to go and then I just secure it um, in place on the back of the brush with some hot glue. Okay, y'all, so after I did this one, I only put two strands on this one and I liked it so much better because it just came out so much cleaner looking and so I end up redoing those first two because the first two look kind of messy, but then after I did this one, look at this, y'all, look how much cleaner and nicer that looks. So I end up redoing those first two. And here's a little trick if you know how you've hot glued something and then you want to redo it, you get that big glob of hot glue. You can just heat that up with your heating tool and then it will just scrape off beautifully and give you a nice clean surface to start all over with. So that's what I do here. And then I just rewrap these, each of these with two strands. And y'all look how much nicer this looks. It's so much prettier than that big glob of jute that we originally had. Now it's time to paint our project board with the primary color and I am ch I chose white here and I'm just going to paint this entire surface with two coats and then when this is completely dry we can lift up our lettering to reveal some beautiful black letters underneath. Okay y'all, so the struggle here was real. Normally when I make these boards I use large lettering. This lettering is really small and delicate and it took a long time to peel this up. Okay, y'all, <laughs> so that really took a minute. <laughs> it was really hard to lift all of this up. It was very time, well, it wasn't really hard. It was just very time consuming, but it looks really good now that it's done. And y'all, I love this quote. Just as nature colored flowers, art colors our lives. And I love this. It's very personal to me because if, if you've been with me a minute, y'all know that I love gardening, but I also love art. And so I thought this was a very fitting quote for our project. All right, let's move on to the fun embellishing part of this. We are going to just start attaching all of our cute little paint brushes down and we're going to put fill this in with a whole bunch of little flower petals. I did add just a touch of the little green leaves in the background. They just kind of will um, subtly peek through when all is said and done. But then I'm going to go ahead and start layering in some flower petals and these flowers right here that I'm working with here, these are paper flowers and I found them in the scrapbook section at Hobby Lobby. I love them. They're the perfect size for this project. So I'm just going to go ahead and start attaching all of them with hot glue and I just start layering, layering, layering until um, each one of these gets really full and kind of a fluffy looking, I guess, because I want it to look like, you know, a full bouquet of flowers peeking out of all of our paint brushes.
really have a rhyme or reason as to you know how I'm laying these down. I kind of just eyeball it and I just kind of go with my gut and start layering them in and placing them as I feel you know like they look their best. So you know there's no real like rule here as to how you lay down your flowers. I say you just do you and fill in each little section of your paint brushes the way that you like it and the way that looks good to you. A lot of times I say less is more, <laughs> but I am not so sure that that rule always applies to embellishing because as I was going through this, I just kept adding flowers. I couldn't seem to stop myself. I liked to add a little bit like those layers where I was kind of adding flowers on top of flowers to kind of give it that poofy dimensional look. All right, now that our flowers are all in place, we need to add a handle to our board. So I'm just gonna use some um, wire here, and I don't remember what gauge wire this is, but it is a pretty heavy wire. So I just string it through, and then I'm going to wrap it around my paintbrush to kind of get some curly cues um, on the, you know, the, the front part that pokes out, and then I smoosh it down against the board to kind of prevent it from being able to pull back through the board. And then I take my little fine pliers and just kind of um, smash in the rest of those those um, ends that were sticking out and kind of tuck them in so that they're not pokey and dangerous because we don't want to poke ourselves so this is how it turned out y'all I absolutely love this what do y'all think I am so excited about this project. I think y'all are really going to love this one. We are just going to need another project board, some fabric, some jute, and some burlap ribbon for this. And I did pull this um, project board from our scrap wood pile, but you can buy these long rectangular project boards at Hobby Lobby, and you can also get them at Dollar Tree. However, if you use the Dollar Tree ones, I highly recommend gluing two or three of them together because you want a nice, strong, thick, board. So I first just painted that whole thing with white as you saw me do there. And now we're going to do the fun, fun, fun part. We are going to create some burlap flowers. Y'all, these flowers are so easy. We're just going to cut a length of burlap. And I will tell you that the longer length of burlap you cut, the bigger around, like the bigger diameter flower you're going to get. And then the smaller length that you cut, you'll get more like a flower bud. Then we're just going to start pulling out all these vertical strings. So you can see how I'm pulling all the vertical strings out of this. Make sure you leave the horizontal strings completely intact or this won't work at all. So just pull out all the vertical strings, except for I do leave like five or six on either end of this because we need those to um, glue this project together. This is so much fun. There's just something so satisfying about pulling all these little strings out and they pulled out really, really easily on this um, burlap ribbon that I got. And I did get this at Hobby Lobby, this particular ribbon, but you can get burlap ribbon just about anywhere. I've seen it at Walmart, Michaels, just all the craft stores. So we'll just continue pulling out all of these vertical strings, leaving at least five or six on each end. This is how it should look after all of your vertical strings are pulled out. Now, some of those horizontal strings will try to come out as well, but tr you know, try very hard to leave them intact. So I've cut three different links here and then went ahead and just pulled all the strings and prepared them ahead of time. Now we are going to fold this in half and we're going to use those sides where we left, you know how we left like five or six strands on either end. We're going to glue those together and see how it gives us all these beautiful little loops. Those are what's going to form our flower. So I am just using hot glue to glue these together, but y'all be really careful when you do this because this burlap is, you know, very um, 
holy. It has a lot of holes in it and I don't want you to burn yourself. So be very careful. Make sure you use like your finger protectors or your um, silicone um, silicone thingy. I'm not sure what that thingy is called, but I use my silicone thing to just press it all down so that I don't burn my fingers. So we're just going to do that all the way up the whole side of that. And then we're going to start rolling this all up. And I do hot glue that um, all of this together. So I start my thing. I put a dab of glue, then start it. And then I just put a big long line of glue, roll it, add another big line of glue and roll it. And you do want to roll this really, really tight, as tight as you possibly can. After we finish rolling them up, I kind of clean them up just by cutting off all the excess burlap that's just kind of poking out. And I just kind of cut it to get everything super flush and really nice and clean. Then after we do that, we can start fluffing these out to create our flower. Y'all, I love these. Aren't these so much fun? fun. I feel like you could just go crazy making these burlap flowers. You could create like a whole bouquet of flowers with these if you wanted to. And you could also use colored burlap too to do this. That would also be a lot of fun, but I just really like this natural earthy um, burlap. So I'm going to go ahead and fluff up all three of our flowers and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that we have all of our flowers fluffed and cute, aren't they darling y'all? We need to add a center to these and I thought it would be cute just to add buttons because I love buttons. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a button into the center of each one of our flowers. Aren't these so sweet? I just love these, y'all. They're just, they almost make me feel giddy. <laughs> I don't know, is that pretty silly? <laughs> They're so cute though, I just can't get over them. I can't get over the cuteness. All right, now we're going to go ahead and create a cute little pocket to um, wrap around the bottom half of our board. And I just took this, um, tack cloth that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to go ahead and fold down the top edge and just cut to kind of create just a small seam and then I fold that over one more time to create that pocket look. Now we'll go ahead and fit this over the top of our board and I get it sort of centered on there and then flip my board over holding it into place and then I'm just going to glue this to the back and I do pull it fairly tight because I don't want like a lot of gaps and, and puckers on the front side of our pocket. After I get the sides um, all securely held into place, I'm going to kind of um, fold this in like, like a Christmas present almost, and then I will cut off all of that excess fabric so that we don't have so much bulk when we go to get ready to um, glue the bottom half of this into place. I'm gonna start gluing this um, with the sides first. So I just sort of 
tuck those sides in, glue them down really well, and then I will tuck in the top part, which is actually, I guess that would be the bottom, but it's the top when you're looking at it this way. So I'm gonna glue that down and then sort of flip my board over again and glue this bottom piece up and over. And I do pull it fairly tight so that we, again, don't get any um, puckers on the front side of our pocket. It's like a perfectly wrapped Christmas present. <laughs> I just love it. Let's embellish this thing now, my favorite, favorite part. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by adding a little bit of greenery to the inside of our pocket. And I try really hard to make sure that um, I'm using some hot glue and I try to make sure that I'm gluing this to the to the actual wood board rather than the front side of the pocket because I want our pocket to still be able to have, you know, that airy pocket look to it, if that even makes sense at all. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fill this up with some of these fun little greenery um, picks that I got at Hobby Lobby. These are actually, um, I had taken these off of an actual garland, like a wispy garland that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I really like the look of these for this particular project. I think they look so wispy and just clean and, and kind of have an elegant look to them. So after I get the pocket fully stuffed with our greenery, we're going to start gluing down our flowers. And I sort of place them into um, the position that I want them all, but we have to have some stems for them. And I'm gonna use jute for the stems. So I sort of place the flower where I want it, put the um, stem down and then glue the flower on top of um, our little stem. And you do wanna use a liberal amount of hot glue for this just to make sure that these stay very securely held into place. And then I will just sort of pull um, our stem a little bit taut. I do leave a little bit of wrinkle and crinkle in it and then I glue, the, glue that into place just so that it kind of holds that fun little curly shape to it. I just repeat this entire process until all three flowers are in place. And I don't know, I have to say, I'm still feeling really giddy. The more I work on this and the more it gets closer and closer to finished, the giddier I start to feel. Cause y'all, I am really loving this one. I think it's safe to say that this is probably my favorite project from the day. To finish off this project, we're going to add a hanger, and I am just using jute for um, our hanger here. And I string it from the back to the front, then I will flip it over and adjust the, um, the height of my loop. I kind of wanted a shorter loop on this for hanging, so I adjust the height of that, and then we will tie some big, large knots to make sure that this is very secure and that it can't be pulled back through. And here's a little um, trick for tying big knots. When you make your loop and you string it through like you would a knot, run it through three to four times and then tighten it from the bottom to the top. Hope that made sense. And that'll give you a really big knot that isn't gonna go anywhere. And then we will just cut off of our ends and here we have it, y'all. I am absolutely loving this. It's still making me feel really giddy. Our last project today is 
um, a piece that I wanted to create to add to my um, outdoor summer decor. Last year, I made some really beautiful dragonflies, so I thought it would be fun to make um, a butterfly as their counterpart. And I will leave a link in the description box for y'all for that dragonflies that, for the dragonflies that we made last summer. I think y'all will enjoy those. They turned out so cool. So I'm just cutting this out on my scroll saw here and. I don't know if you don't have a scroll saw, I think I've actually seen butterfly shaped cutting boards at Hobby Lobby. So you could probably do the same thing with one of those. And here it is all cut out. I kind of felt proud of myself after I got it cut out because this was a little fiddly to cut out. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is because we're going to do some reverse stenciling on this half of the wing. So the first thing I'm going to do is add down some Mod Podge and I'm using glossy Mod Podge here because I want the natural wood to be what shows through on these cute little butterflies. So I add some Mod Podge, then we will adhere our stencil. We're doing a reverse stencil here again and I just cut these out on my cutter. So I'm going to add those and then we will go back over them again with the Mod Podge to prevent bleed through when we go to add our primary color or our top coat. Um, where I sort of messed up a little bit on this project. Okay, so I don't know about y'all, but I have done a bazillion projects and a lot of them I changed my mind halfway through the whole process. So I originally thought that I was going to want this butterfly to be this really pretty green color, but then once I got it on there, I didn't like it at all. So I went back over it with this paint. It's, it's um, a barn wood chalk paint by Folk Art, I believe. So I painted that, let it dry really well, and now we can lift up our um, vinyl to reveal that natural wood underneath. And I really like the stark contrast of the natural wood against this paint. The green would have been really beautiful too, but here's where that um, mistake kind of turned into not such a bad thing because I wanted to wet distress this. And so as I was wet distressing, Look at the way this beautiful, that beautiful green started to show through on this. It's almost like I did it on purpose. <laughs> so wet distressing, I just use a damp towel and then kind of rub pretty firmly. This works really well with chalk paint. It doesn't work so well with like latex or um, acrylic paint, but it works super good with chalk paint. I love how that turned out. And then I go ahead and decide we need to put some splatters on this. So I add in some pretty magenta colored splatters and then some of that creamy colored and a little bit more of that green. But I didn't want the splatters to be on my butterfly and because I forgot to cover them up, I just wiped it off really quickly with my finger. And because we had that Mod Podge there, it sort of, it doesn't absorb and it doesn't absorb anything. So it was easy to wipe up the little splatters that got on my butterflies. Just a little side note here too, to get really good splatters, you wanna make sure that there is a lot of moisture in your paintbrush. Okay, so something I wanted to point out here, see how my wet distressing looks a little bit different on the left wing than it does on the right wing? I think that's because of the Mod Podge. And honestly, it looks so much better. I really love how that wet distressing looks on that Mod Podge side. So if I was ever to do this again, I would make sure that I covered the entire thing with Mod Podge just to get that really cool wet distressed look and I love how this little guy turned out it's gonna look so pretty with my outdoor decor what do you all think of this Well, I just love all three of our projects that we created today. They all three turned out just 
darling. I especially love our pocket board that we made with the burlap flowers. That one is my absolute favorite. And that's the one that I decided to keep for myself. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm keeping all three of them for myself, to be perfectly honest. I love them all. And when I created the paintbrush board, I was originally going to hang that here in the studio. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to hang it here now. I might find something else different to do with it, but we'll just have to see. And the cute little butterfly, I love it. It was so simple and sweet and so easy to make, but it's going to look really cute hanging outside with my summer decor. Last year we made some really beautiful dragonflies, and I think that butterfly will make a fun addition to hang with the dragonflies. Alrighty friends, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I enjoyed sharing this with you. It was so much fun to spend time with y'all. I always appreciate you taking time out of your day to come hang out with me. It means the world to me. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Just when I think I'm on a roll, I, I just, I lose it. <laughs> what else do I want to say after that? Oh, shoot. What is that stuff called? Burlap. Really, really? Really, really? Do we have to have so many reallys? That's a wrap. <laughs>